Hello, good people, and welcome back to another math video. This time we're going to be talking about the area of a triangle and finding the missing dimension. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's get started. You've done some problems where you had these dimensions given on your triangle, something like a base of 10, a height of 6, and you had to figure out the area. But what if one of those dimensions was missing, like height, and instead we just knew the height. And what if you knew the area? Let's say the area is 50. Then could you figure out what the height is? And the answer is yes, you can. And so this video is going to show you what to do to figure out a missing dimension like the height or like the base uh, if we have these other two components. Let's get started. The first thing to think about here is the formula. So when I did a previous video on finding the area of a triangle, I gave you these two different formulas. One was 1 half times base times height, and one was base times height over 2. Mathematically, these formulas will be the same in the end, but I did recommend when you were finding the area of a triangle uh, to use this video, excuse me, to use this formula. However, if we're trying to find the missing dimension, I think that this formula is easier. So when we're trying to find the missing dimension, I would recommend using this formula. So I brought back that first triangle, the one where we were given the base of 10, we don't know the height, and we're given an area of 50. So let's plug these into that area of a triangle formula and see how this is going to work out. So remember, area is equal to 1 half times base times height. Now another piece to remember here is that multiplication is commutative. And what that means is that the order that we multiply terms does not matter. It does not matter if you multiply 1 half times base times height, or if you multiply height times base times 1 half. The order does not matter. So we have to keep that in mind when we begin to substitute some things in. And speaking of substituting, let's do it. So we know that the A area is equal to 50. I'm going to keep my 1 half. I know the base is 10, and the height is undefined right now. Now, 1 half times 10. That's like saying 1 half of 10. What is 1 half of 10? Well, half of 10 is 5. So I know now that those, these two can just be turned into Five. And that leaves me with the height. And I could write times 5, or I could just write 5h. And we know that when we have a number right against a variable, that means to multiply. So now I have to isolate the variable. To do that, I'm going to divide by that coefficient, 5. And those 5s will cancel, leaving me with just h. But I also have to do the same thing to the other side. Now on this side, 50 divided by 10 5, is, excuse me, is going to leave me with 10. So I know now that the height on this triangle is 10. Here's another triangle, a little bit different shape, but we'll solve it exactly the same way. So let's start out with that formula. Area is equal to 1 half times base times height. And then we're going to be starting by substituting in the things that we know. I know the area is 60. I can keep my 1 half. My base is that's given as 20, and my height is not, so I'm just going to keep that h. 1 half times 20, or 1 half of 20, is 10. So this is going to be 10, and then I still have h. I can write that right next to my 10, 10h. And again, I want to isolate that variable, so I'll divide by the coefficient, that 10. Sorry, that's a bad 10. And I need to do the same thing to the other side. These will cancel, leaving me with just h on this side. And 60 divided by 10 is 6. So the height of this triangle is 6. What if we knew the height, but we had to figure out the base? Let's see that next. In this example, the height of 7 is given, the area of 35 is given, but we don't know the base. We can still figure it out the same way, although I'm going to give you a little warning here. The commutative property is going to help out here. 1 half 
times base, times height. And we're going to begin substituting in the things that we know. We know the area is 35. Keep my 1 half. I don't know the base, but I do know the height. All right, now this is why I said that we really need to remember the commutative property. Even though the 1 half and the 7 are not next to each other, we can still multiply them first. If it helps you, you can even change the order of this and rewrite it, but you don't have to. So, well, but I can show that to you. So I could write 1 half times 7 times the base, and that would equal 35. So 1 half of 7. Now 7 is an odd number, so this doesn't work out evenly. But 1 half of 7 is 3 and a half, or 3 and 5 tenths. So I'll write it as 3 and 5 tenths times b, and that's going to equal 35. Now, I need to isolate the variable, so I'm going to divide by that coefficient, that 3.5 out front, 3 and 5 tenths. I need to do the same thing on the other side. These will cancel, leaving me with just b, and 35 divided by 3 and 5 tenths is 10. So I know that the base is 10. Okay, to recap, number one, the formula. Like I said, mathematically, you will get the same answer. I think that the base times height over 2 formula is a little bit more difficult with these. So I would recommend the area equals 1 half times base times height. Whoops, height. Now, remember, commutative. You can change the order of a multiplication phrase. So it's given to you as 1 half times base times height but you can turn the order around. Then we're just going to substitute and solve, and you should be all set. All right, that's it. Have a great day. You can watch it a few times if you like, and we'll see you again soon.